So we'll move ahead with this uh, semiconductor laser. In this we have a principal, construction and the working. So three things. So the semiconductor laser in is one. Uh, nowadays we are using most okay, in the communication purpose, in the OFC cables, in the CD drives and DVD drives to burn the CDs, DVDs and all. Uh, we use this semiconductor uh, laser to measure the barcodes okay in the supermarkets and all you might have seen in the market that they we use that uh, barcode measuring semi uh, laser those are all semiconductor laser this is very tiny handheld low cost and we are here we are not using any uh, the gas as, as such the it is very compact and very very tiny for to in the toys and all we use this kind of a semiconductor so let us uh, look at the principle behind this so what is the principle of uh, the semiconductor laser so semiconductor means we know that semiconductor has valence band and we have conduction band so there will be again two levels as we have in the gases of the molecules we have the lower energy and higher energy in the same way we have here the valence band and we have the conduction band so what happens when we supply energy to this when I apply voltage across the diode so semiconductor chapter is completely different so wherein again we will learn what is conduction band what is valence band so now at present uh, I hope you know what is valence band what is the conduction band these are the bands which are there inside the semiconductors okay so when we apply when we uh, apply voltage or when we supply energy or we can say pumping what happens is the electron which are there here okay so these are uh, valence electrons okay these valence electrons will go to the conduction band and becomes conduction electrons okay by leaving uh, here hole and it, it goes the electron this we can say electron transferring leaving behind the hole okay so what is the basic principle is when at at some condition so there is a population inversion built between this conduction band and the valence band so which we, we achieve the population inversion that means what there will be more number of electrons there will be more number of holes so there is a population inversion between these two state that we will see how we will achieve this population inversion and what is a population inversion in case of uh, semiconductor laser and these will recombine okay now we have excited these things and it goes and sits to the conduction band okay when these will recombine these will join together we call it as a recombination in the semiconductor electrons and holes are the charge carriers electrons and holes are the charge carriers when we supply energy it goes to the conduction band so recombination of electron and holes are uh, that itself is the uh, principle behind the semiconductor when the trip recombines it gives the laser as output this is the construction of uh, the semiconductor laser okay here we have uh, two things so semiconductor means we know p-type and n-type semiconductors so p-type semiconductor is one in which majority charge carriers are uh, holes n-type semiconductor is one in which majority charge carriers are electrons so when we combine join together we get the p-n junction and this makes us the formation of uh, the diode <coughs> so this is the formation of a diode okay so here we take p type material and n type material so here we are taking heavily doped p type that is gallium arsenide we are taking so we are considering this is gallium arsenide so this is heavily doped gallium arsenide and heavily doped uh, n type heavily doped gallium arsenide material so this is the n type n type gallium arsenide and the p type gallium arsenide okay we are taking p 
semiconductor material this is the semiconductor gallium is one uh, material and arsenide is another material uh, the composite of this gives us the gallium arsenide semiconductor okay so we get this n type uh, heavily doped we are going to dope it but tellurium we are going to dope it with with the tellurium when we dope this with the tellurium we will get the n type so when we dope this uh, when we dope this with zinc okay we will get the p type material okay that we have to dope it heavily that means more number of uh, zinc atom should be there in this gallium arsenide more number of tellurium atoms should be there in this atom so doping we call it as a doping so when we dope it we will get this p type material and we will get this n type material the doping is very heavy the doping is uh, the 10 to the power 17 to 10 to the power 18 18 atoms okay atoms per centimeter cube so, so many atoms if we add like 10 to the power 17 to 10 to the power 18 atoms if i add to these materials then we call it as the heavily doping okay we have to dope it and we have to uh, create these two uh, p type and n type material okay then we have to combine this fine and we will be forming the pn junction so this is a pn junction and in this the what is the size of this the size of this is 1 mm okay the size of this is from here to here that is 1 mm okay it is very tiny you can imagine one centimeter is uh, this uh, this pen size diameter of the pen size is 5 mm okay 1 mm you can imagine this is the size of the 1 mm and this side also this is 1 mm size okay and here we have uh, this uh, two sides this is this is one side okay pair of sides this is one pair of a side and this is another pair of a side and this pair of a side is roughened this pair of a sides are roughened okay this this pair of sides are roughened and these pairs of rise of uh, uh, the this semiconductor are polished okay are cleaved okay when we cleave it okay when we break the semiconductor we will get the polished facets or we can say this is the polished surface and this side also it is a polished surface this side and that side is the roughened surface okay and we have to give a ohmic contact or it is called as a metal contact okay so silver or gold is is evaporated on this or we can call it as a metal contact for the good contact between this wire and this semiconductor we should use this both the sides bottom side and top side we use the metal contact and which is given to the battery now can you tell me what is the bias here whether is it a for uh, already i have written here it is a forward bias because p type is connected to the uh, the positive side of the battery and n side is connected to the negative side of the battery it is the forward bias and we have to connect in the forward bias okay what is the active medium in this case this pn junction or gallium arsenide itself is the active medium for this okay so when we apply the voltage to this we will get the laser from this uh, from this junction this that junction uh, junction size is around 100 micrometers okay the junction size is so this this junction size is around 100 micrometers from this junction the laser will come out and this entire setup is fitted in a small metallic case this is fitted in the small metallic case okay so this is the construction and these are the components which are used to construct the gallium arsenide laser so we have here gallium arsenide we will we will take another we may take another semiconductor for example in the market uh, we have indium gallium nitride semiconductors we have gallium aluminium arsenide semiconductors we have uh, we have indium gallium arsenide there are so many varieties of uh, semiconductors are available so depending on the composition 
so we will get output different okay we will get here 400 uh, nanometer of wavelength which is coming out the laser wavelength is 400 nanometer so in the 85 nanometer of light which is coming out laser which is coming out in this case 980 nanometer of wavelength light which is coming out so these are not there for our studies but what i'm telling is the active medium can be changed we can take different active medium okay different active medium media and then we can get the different wavelength or different desired uh, wavelength for different applications we may require 400 so this is uh, the le lesser wavelength this is a higher wavelength here we'll get the red color here we will get the blue color light okay depends on the uh, application where we are going to apply this is the p type and n type material this is n type this is p type material when we join here we will get the depletion region okay when we apply the default bias it will be negative this is positive okay this is the default bias so this is uh, here we have electrons more uh, number of electrons here we have majority ca charge carriers are the holes we will get uh, this depletion region okay this is the depletion region we call okay and uh, in the reverse bias it is breakdown and we will not get any current in the forward bias we will get the current and also we have drawn the graph like this okay this is current versus voltage graph right so now the same thing we are going to draw the band diagram in the form of band diagram so band diagram means it includes uh, things like this we have the valence band okay so we will call it as ev this is the valence band of a p junction p type so here it is p type material and here we have the n type material so this is valence band and uh, this is the conduction band conduction band it is ec okay and for n type we have like this we have uh, the ev lower energy so it is less here that is this is ev for the n type gallium arsenide and this is the why it happens this is because of the band bending this is called as the band bending since we have doped it heavily so there will be band bending when i draw the pn junction band diagram it will be like this okay so we have n type uh, the bands valence band conduction band p types bands valence band and conduction band when we join these together there will be band bending so this is called as the band bending of the junction and this forms the depletion region so how we have formed the depletion region in the our earlier classes that is like this so we have now here the depletion region so this is the depletion region okay so we know that the p, p type materials will have holes so holes are represented with the this empty circle okay these are the holes and we have the electrons in the n type so n types we have the electrons let us say these are the electrons which are there okay so these are the electrons and these are the holes okay this is the pn junction band diagram this is before application of the voltage okay when we apply a suitable voltage to this what happens is these holes will start traveling this way okay these uh, electrons will start traveling in this way right so these will be injected to the depletion region so these will be these electrons will be injected to the depletion region okay till what energy till the fermi energy so this line dotted line is e of f this is called as the fermi energy we are going to learn this again in in the semiconductor chapter so now at present we have to understand this is line till where it travels so this is the line in the uh, in the n type okay in the n type the fermi level will be above this uh, 
conduction band so this is the conduction band okay in the end type it will be below the below the valence band okay so these holes will travel so when i apply the voltage so before application so these are the holes these are the electrons when i apply the voltage these will start injecting so these will start injecting to the depletion region and these will start injecting to the depletion region so this will travel to the depletion region okay at a certain condition at a certain stage there will be more number of uh, electrons accumulated in the depletion region there will be more number of holes accumulated in the depletion region so at a certain stage there will be recombination between these two electrons there will be huge number of recombination between holes and electrons giving us the radiation that is h nu we will get so this is the laser which is coming out from the uh, diode okay that is called as a laser diode so this is the basic working principle behind uh, this uh, semiconductor laser where we join p type and n type depletion region is created population inversion so in this case population inversion means huge number of electrons and huge number of holes are recombining in the depletion region giving us output as a laser so this is the basic thing here we know the basic equation that is energy is equal to h nu okay that in turn you can write it as h nu that is hc divided by lambda okay so if i take this e that is energy eg that means energy band gap that is the energy band gap right so energy band gap is eg that is equal to hc divided by lambda right so we know the band gap of this right and uh, we know this uh, planck's constant we know this the uh, we know this speed of a light okay so that i can easily write this lambda is equal to it is hc divided by eg right so when i substitute all the values so eg is it is 1.4 electron volts okay hc divided by 1.4 electron volts if i substitute then i'll get the lambda i'll get the lambda is 840 nanometer so this is the radiation which is coming out that is uh, this 840 nanometer of light which is coming out as a laser that means 800 nanometer is nothing but it's a red color so when we apply the voltage across the junctions we will get the 840 nanometers of uh, radiation which is coming out as a laser.